we actually have two closest relatives, not one. And bonobos and chimpanzees are like our cousins. And it's a little bit like having two first cousins. They're equally related to you, but they're different from each other. One of the reasons people haven't heard of them is because bonobos only live south of the Congo River in one country, the Democratic Republic of Congo. What humans naturally jump to is their sexual behavior. The Kama Sutra is quite boring if you watch bonobos for a while. But I think if bonobos could talk, they would sort of be puzzled and say, really what's special about us is we are the only ape that doesn't kill. One of the ways that we've tried to understand bonobo psychology better is we've given them the opportunity to share with one another in a way that challenges ideas about how humans might be unique. Given that bonobos in the wild are not aggressive towards um, strangers and in fact are often seen interacting with them uh, quite peacefully, uh, we thought, well, what a wonderful opportunity to test this idea. We found that bonobos actually voluntarily help a stranger to get something that they want. This has been found in little kids in many different cultures, but it's the first time that we found similar behaviors in non-human primates. It tells us part of human altruism maybe is a result of biology. Whether it goes to the degree of humans is then another question, but at least it's in part of our DNA. So once we knew that, we got really interested. What is it about bonobos emotionally that allows them to do this? So one of the fun things that's been used to understand how animals, including humans, feel about others is to look at contagious yawning. We know that contagious yawning in humans develops in young infants right as they begin to have empathy towards others. Start recording. This is my body um, group mate session too. So we showed what we called bonobo TV. <laughs> they saw either a bonobo that they knew very well yawning or they saw a bonobo they'd never seen before yawning. When they saw the videos of the strangers yawning, they yawned more often than when they saw the video of the bonobos they know yawning. So it seems that bonobos have even a level of emotional engagement or even empathy towards strangers that we don't see in other species. Here is a species that could teach us more about how to be humane than probably anything else in the world, but they are in a place in the world that they are under a lot of pressure. Most of the bonobos that we studied, their mothers has been killed by poachers and hunters. And when they were little kids, they were sold in the black market as pets. Lolaya Bonobo Sanctuary is an orphanage for bushmeat victims. Today, I would say that things are harder than ever. China and India are having a huge influence in Central Africa. You know, our big fear was that there was going to be a perceived market for bushmeat, a perceived international um, market for pet great apes. But the reality today is there's a real market. Great apes are being sold for fifty to three hundred thousand dollars each to zoos, circuses, and private individuals. In terms of how many bonobos are remaining in the wild, the short answer is scary few. For each ape that leaves the country and actually is in a zoo in China, you're going to have lost at least two or three dozen to get that individual out. You just can't sustain those losses when you're talking about a slow reproducing species like great apes. The solution is to not only work hard to save those wild places, to end the bushmeat trade, which is what Friends of Bonobos is all about, but also to engage with the Chinese. That's our goal, to get people excited about bonobos just like we are.